Good afternoon. A little bit later than planned, thanks to a um, internet challenge. I'll put it that way. <laughs> it's amazing what happens when you don't have internet. Anyway, that's another story. But today we're on episode 747, staying on track. And the talk topic today is about dating, because I had a conversation yesterday that triggered this, which is, um, would you date you? And some tips on how to be a better date, or how to be more dateable. And this is going to be maybe less on the romantic side, more on the behavior side. So let's see where we go. So before I jump into that, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and why I do these talks every day. Uh, my name is Barry Selby. Ta-da, in case you haven't seen it before. I am a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and relationship attraction expert, helping women create balance in love, life, and business because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine. That's what informs my work and also what started these talks over two years ago, which is formally called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring a Feminine Heart. Now I call it MFTM for short because then I could have longer titles, <laughs> The Limitations of Text. So today we're episode number 747 after a, a long run and the topic today is about dating and in some ways it's kind of like dating etiquette but it's more than that. It's about mindset and a few other things. So let's jump in, shall we? First of all, if you're already in a relationship this may not be relevant to you although some things I'm going to talk about will affect and, and up-level the relationship you're already in. If you're single or interested in dating, you might want to take these notes to heart for your future references. And if you are dating, here we go. <laughs> so, um, first of all, the one thing I want to say is the reason why I said would you date you is because sometimes when you're out dating all the time, there's such an energy focused on going out there to meet somebody, to attract somebody, to be there connected, which I talked about yesterday about the um, looking for love in all the wrong places thing that you don't look at yourself and consider what you bring to the date and also how you bring yourself to the date. And I mean this from the point of view of a few things. One of which is, I'm going to start with this one, it's one of my pet peeves, is time. <laughs> it's such a simple one, but it's such a vital one, is show up on time. If you're going to set a time for a date, keep that commitment. And if by chance you're going to run late, text and let them know you're running late. Don't just... Hope they'll wait for you when they and when you show up. This goes for both sides, by the way. It's not just for women or men, it's for both. Because I know on both sides of this conversation, there are people who are either notoriously or either notoriously late or not focused enough to stay on time. So be on time. And this actually is going to tie into something I talked about before, which is about keeping agreements. I'm going to side by slightly because this is part of dating too, is keep your word. If you say you're going to show up, show up. If you say you're going to be at a certain time, be at a certain time. If you want to dress up for the occasion, you want to hold a certain... Well, that's actually, a, that's the second one. All right, I'll move to that one. Do you dress the part for the date? And I said dress the part, not dress up, because for some dates it may be casual, it may be something else. But do you dress appropriately for the date? Do you go to the effort, if you're a man, to put on pants versus jeans? Do you put on jeans versus shorts? Do you put on jeans that are clean versus jeans that are holes and ragged? There's, there's reference points. For women, do you, do you do your hair? Do you wear different jewelry? Do you make things a priority for you when you go on dates? Most women, they usually do. It's more the men that don't always step up. So that one's probably more biased on the gender side towards the men to learn this one. Part of this dating experience for some people is they're looking for the love of one person that will last forever. That's one of the plans. There's, there's not, they're not the other one, by the way. Some people are looking just for someone to hang out with for that night. And there's a lot of stuff in between. There's also people who just want to go out to date just to get out of the house. So they're not even concerned about doing anything. They just want to get out and meet somebody. So there's a range of choices in the dates. But all of them, I think, come down to one, some simple things, which, again, is keeping, is keeping agreements on being on time, dressing appropriately for the date, being willing to participate respectfully in the date, meaning that when you're with somebody, be willing to listen. So many people I've seen on dates, and I've been on a few dates myself with people, where the other person would just keep like going on and on and on and on, and it was kind of like, I want to know more about them, but it'd be nice to have a two-way conversation. So I'm speaking basically on both sides of the conversation to have a sense of um, balance between the two parties, you know, because I know some people say dating as you go, you've got to be a listener. Well, if you're both listening, who's talking? <laughs> so have decorum, have respect, be willing to invite and ask questions to get somebody to answer you back and then let them ask you questions and be very, be fair in this one. It's not being one-sided. So that's another one to think about. 
Um, so that's th number three. Number four. Let's see if we've got number four. I have no idea how many I've got, but these are just what comes up in the moment. Um, bring your joy and your creativity to the date. Because sometimes it feels like when you go on a date, it's going to be a lot of pressure. And for the other person, if they're the one organizing the date, it can feel like a lot of pressure because they've got to make sure they get it right and do things right. If you are interested in the date, if you're going there to have fun and enjoy, keep that intention primarily focused. In fact, let me, let me back up and say another way. Have a good intention for the date. Have an intention to have fun, to connect, to enjoy, to embrace the moment. This person may not be somebody you go out with again, but why not enjoy the time together? Now, <laughs> caveat on that one, which is probably number five, is don't use the date. Meaning don't use them to get what you want out of it. So if you're a woman, sometimes as a man, you don't want to like spend your date's money on the best food because that can be disrespectful. Now, if the person you're going out with, because I'm trying to make this neutral because it can go both ways nowadays because things have changed between men and women, there's a definite shift from male only. Some women have asked men out for dates. I've been asked out for a date before. And I've talked about whoever, whoever asks pays. That's kind of one of my, not rules, but on recommendations, because that's one of the things that does become a question like, if someone asks someone else for a date, who pays? Like, well, if you ask the person out on the date, then you pay. So ladies, just be aware of that. If you ask a man out, then you're willing to front the money for the date. Having said that, if you're the one that's being treated to the date, be conscious of your date's choices, meaning that the, the, the um, investment of their money you want to make, be reasonable. Don't go and pick up the most expensive thing on the item on the menu, because I've had people, they talk to people about that, thankfully not happened to me. I've had experiences, of, I've had people tell me of their experiences where they went on dates, where the, part, the person they went on a date with, the first date, picked the most expensive thing on the menu and ran up a massive bill. Don't do that. Be respectful enough, be caring enough, be compassionate enough, be invested enough in your date to not invest in the menu. That was pretty good. That came out pretty good that way. Somebody consider, because dating is a chance, really, to get to know somebody. I've, and okay, I've got to drop my little teaching tip in here. I've made it clear from my personal, personal perspective that when you meet somebody for the first time, especially for dating app, don't schedule a romantic date. Schedule and choose a time to meet that is daytime in a popular place for something cheap and fun. Because the idea of the date is to meet the person, not to eat the food. People are going, hmm, what? Yes, when you go on a date, it's not about what you do, it's about who you're with. Ideally, if it's not that, maybe you want to start eating alone. Oh, that's going to strike a chord with some people. But in reality, if you're going on a date with somebody else, you're there to meet the other person. And frankly, sometimes that food becomes a mask to hide behind because you're too busy eating to talk or distracted by other things so i recommend daytime dates i talk about like you meet me at me for coffee or tea somebody i know talks about maybe me for ice cream it's like doing something that's cheap cheerful simple easy we can hang out maybe go for a walk together whilst you're drinking or eating ice cream and get to know each other a little bit better then if there's chemistry if there's a joy if there's a th thing about this be fun let's do a real date then go on a nice date but the thing is, I call it a pre-date, but really it's the first get-to-know-you session before the date. It's an introduction before your real date. So that's a chance to get to know somebody. But again, the same things apply. For that pre-date, be on time. Keep your agreements. Dress appropriately. Ask questions. Be willing to find out more about the other person. Don't be too overtly telling all about you. And don't be totally silent so they don't know anything about you either. These are simple things. But a lot of people don't get this. I don't know... That I know there's no school for this. There are experts who teach dating, and I'm not a dating expert, by the way, and this is not my speciality. My speciality is helping you attract the right relationship. That's not dating. Dating's part of it. But these are things I've learned and watched and observed and heard over the years that make sense. Some of these are common sense stuff that if you are someone who's got common sense, it should be obvious. So let me see, that's number five, and that was number six, I think. Let's see if there's anything else. I'll give you six to start with. This should keep you busy. Um, oh, yes. <sighs> be honest. <laughs> I mean, it sounds crazy to say this, but be honest. There's so, that's one reason, again, why I talk about the pre-date. I'll get back to that in a second again. 
But when you're on a date with somebody, if it's not working for you, tell them that. If it doesn't feel right, you need to leave, or you don't feel that it's going to work out, or you feel extremely attracted to them, let them know the truth. Be honest about it. Now, I said let them know. It doesn't mean you've got to jump the table and hump their bones right there. That's a different story. Now, that could happen if you have the right chemistry, but I'm not recommending that. But what I am saying is be honest about how you feel. Also, after the date or after the connection, after that pre-date idea, be honest there too. If you, at the end of the date, really feel like it's not going to work out, you don't want to see them again, tell them that. Don't say, I'll get back to you, and then don't call. Don't be a person who says, I'll call you tomorrow, and then not do that. I'd love to see you again. If you don't feel honestly you want to see them again, tell them, um, I enjoyed our date, but I feel I'll do it again. Be honest about it. It's okay to do that. I believe it in terms of respect. Rather than not saying anything, and then next, two days later text them saying, thank you, but no more, thank you very much, is worse than saying the night that it ends, that, you know, thanks for the dinner, it was a nice chat, I had a great time, but I'm not feeling it on a, chem on a chemistry level. Friends, sure. Or friends, no, even. But that honesty is important. So honesty, same as, same as about speaking the truth, this is part of that too. Be real, be honest, be transparent. Whether it's the pre-date where you're going to go out for coffee or for ice cream, whatever it is, or if it's a real romantic date. In fact, every step of the way. See, some of the things I'm talking about apply to you if you're in a relationship as well, and even if you're single, because these are things to reflect on yourself. With your partner, can you be more honest? Can you keep your agreements? Can you be appropriate with them, dress appropriately when you go out for different things? Can you check in with them, make sure you're on the same page? Are you willing to tell them the truth, how you feel, and be honest about it? This is not just dating tips. This is relating tips, too. I just think there's anything else on my plate that shows up. So being honest is a key thing. Following up, tell the truth. Um, ah, <laughs> The other side of that one is be willing to hear the truth. Part of the risk of telling the truth is you're not sure if you're going to be received by the other person. So if on that date the other person tells you that maybe they like you a lot more than you like them and you don't feel this honest, it doesn't feel a match to you, tell them the truth. It can be hard to do, but better to do it there than prolong the agony. So on the, and on the other side, if they tell you that they're not interested and you really feel there's attraction there, you must be honest and say, I, I, thanks for letting me know, I was actually kind of attracted, but I appreciate you telling me the truth. Acknowledge and receive the truth as well as you give it. This is the other side of the coin, so that's number seven or eight, but it's, it's in there. So these are framing what I would suggest a way to date and also to relate, because the truth is they're not much different. Yes, the context is different, but how you are participating in dating or in relationships, these are common ground things. Because also the other part of this is, is you want to be as real as you can on the date so you're not putting on pretenses on the date before you get to know them. This is actually number, number eight. When you're going out with somebody on a date, it's often, people often think, I'll put on my best behavior. So that way when we get together, you can relax and be who you really are. No, don't do that. Don't sell them a bill of goods where it's all perfect at the beginning and then be bullshit at the end. Be willing to be transparent, honest, as I mentioned, in all your interactions, so they get to know who you really are. So when you get together with them and you get into a relationship with that person, perhaps, there's nothing to change. It's easy to tell the truth. So if on the date you tell them that um, you are dating other people because you're not sure who you're going to be with, tell them the truth. Now, if you choose to be in a relationship, hopefully you have the conversation about monogamy or polyamory, what you're preferring, so you know that what you're choosing matches, and then you can transform that as well. So it's about being honest and transparent, both beginning and end, or I should say in dating and in a relationship, because it's so much easier. There's a lot less hassle, a lot less challenge if you just speak the truth all the time, because then you don't have to worry about making up stuff or remembering what you made up, which is even worse. Let me see if there's anything else. That one that one's a, can be a juicy one, um, because there are sometimes mismatch levels, so there, isn't a, there is a chance where you don't connect, and so you may want to change your energy to try and fit the other person. And then when you get into a relationship, you stop doing that. So it's important, again, to be transparent all the way through, to be honest at the beginning, honest at the end, so the person gets to know who you really are. And then you can decide if you really want to be together. Hopefully the other person's matching this and they're giving you the same thing back you're giving them, which would be great. Um, number eight. Let's see what else there is. Anything else? These are just an assorted list of tips, by the way. It's not a Bible of these things. Um, they're just my suggestions that may help you improve your quality of connection and relationship. 
Um, what else is there? I'm actually dipping into my, remembering in my book, the different principles I have in my book about um, the focus of um, how to be in a relationship and applying it to dating because they seem to match together. Let me see if there's anything else on there. By the way, my book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, is a good book for singles and couples. Um, it's a book that's about healthy relationships so you can actually get better principles. I'll put the book, I'll put the link in the comments so you can check it out. Um, I think that's the only other thing that's going to keep you going. That's a fairly decent list of things to think about. If you use those alone, that'll, that'll probably up level your dating experience for sure. Um, I think that's going to be it. Nothing else coming to mind right now. So I think that's going to complete this episode. So let me give you some logistical things. And if no one drops in, I'll come back to it. Um, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do these every day on Facebook Live, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. At 5 p.m. Pacific time, usually, although today um, was delayed because of internet issues and yesterday was an event, so I haven't kept my 5 p.m. commitment every day, but I'm working on it. So tomorrow, hopefully, 5 p.m. Pacific time. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's the way it goes. And if you want to see the replays of my broadcast, they always go, on, go onto my business page on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby dot author. And thirdly, you can find the replays on my YouTube channel if you happen to like watching on YouTube instead of Facebook. If you go to my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine. Um, also, I like my Facebook page. That would be wonderful, too. And I think that's going to be about it. Tomorrow will be episode 748. I'm not sure what we'll talk about yet. Stuff comes through the way it comes through. I hope this has been of value to you. It's given you some inspiration, some thoughts about how maybe your dating could improve. And if you have any thoughts, questions, please put them below, and I'll respond when I sign off. As always, I invite you to take care of yourself. I will see you again tomorrow, and uh, have a good night. Bye.